Hello, my name is Erin Willer and I am an associate professor in the Department of Communication Studies at the University of Denver. My research and teaching focus on the pedagogy of loss. My work is inspired by my own experiences with grief and loss. I have had three miscarriages and I also lost my son Milo three hours after he and his twin sister Matilda were born in 2013. There are a couple of tools that I have used both personally and in my work with students and other bereaved families to help facilitate coping with grief and loss. And one of those is storytelling and the other one is art. So today I am here to share with you a project that's going to help you do some storytelling in art making in honor of your baby or a baby who is beloved to you in some way. So our project is going to be one of these fabulous star themed planters. So before you get started, you want to do a little bit of brainstorming so you can figure out how you want to decorate your pots. So there are many different choices and ideas. I'm going to show you just a few today to get you started, but you really want to keep in mind that this isn't meant to be a perfect Pinterest project that I show you one specific thing and yours should turn out exactly the way that mine does. The idea is to really personalize it so that it can be a special reminder of your baby or someone else's baby that you're going to be giving the pot to. So as you can see on this pot, I have incorporated all my babies that I have lost. I have my son Milo and um, our baby and our baby that we call baby Willer and then another baby here that we call Tafiti. So this would be an example of how you might incorporate a number of babies. On this pot I have a quote that's meaningful to me and here is one that I did for my son Milo just with his name and personalized for him. This one is just a pot that is more general, so this can be a great one if you don't have a name for your baby or if you prefer it be more private, um, just to be something special to have in your home. The idea is not to replicate exactly what I'm going to show you today, but to really make a planter that's going to memorialize your unique baby or babies and is going to help you engage in that process of thinking about who your baby is, what their story might be, how you may want to share your baby with others who may be coming into your home, seeing your planter sitting on the windowsill. You might also think about having a nice big Bring planter that you're going to put your annuals in that are going to bloom and blossom over the summer. So again, it's really up to you and you can think about that as you're getting going. In terms of supplies, you are going to need a set of paints, brushes, and some pots. For the paints that I use for my pots, I really like the golden acrylic heavy body paints because it's going to be really helpful to make sure that you can get enough paint and don't have to go over and over again. You can use something lighter, but these are really nice if you want something thick. So I have here the golden acrylic heavy body in carbon black, in titanium white, the phthalo blue, and then the lighter, which is the cobalt blue. 
Now I've got a couple of other kinds of paints as well. These are what we're going to use for our stars and these are a lot thinner than the heavy body golden acrylics. These are both by Craftsmart but you can really get these at any craft store. Um, this is the Craftsmart satin acrylic paint and then this is the Craftsmart multi-surface premium metallic acrylic paint. So these are going to be nice and thin for us when we go to put some of our stars on. I also have a couple of Sharpie paint pens. One is the um, fine point and one is the medium point. For brushes, again, it really depends on what size pots you have and how much area you need to cover. But for my pots today, I am using a couple of bigger brushes that are going to be helpful for our sky. And then I have some thinner brushes that are going to help us with the details of our stars. You also are going to need to have a toothbrush with you because that is going to be helpful for getting some of the stars in place as well. For pots, you can use a variety of different sizes. You can go with the traditional terracotta, the graphite. I had a couple of other little pots around home that will work just fine. They're all going to get covered up, so it doesn't really matter what color they are. You do want to stay away from the pots that have that glazing around them because that will make it tricky for the paint to stick tight to them. Okay, I'm going to start with my blank terracotta pot and you want to think about the pot being divided into quarters. So I'm going to start at the bottom quarter with my cobalt blue. Okay, and I'm just going to go around that bottom quarter and just kind of get that paint nice and saturated. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. You want to think about the pot in relation to what our actual sky looks like. So if you think about it, the sky is always lighter toward the horizon. You think about all the city lights shining on the sky and as you get farther and farther up then it gets darker and darker so that's really the look that we're going for here i also like to just paint the bottom gives it a little bit more of a finish okay make sure you've got all of those little terracotta colored pieces in and you want to keep it kind of wet. You, this paint dries a little bit quickly, so you want to keep it wet. And now you're going to see that I'm going to switch here to my phthalo blue. Now we're going to use the phthalo blue for the middle two quarters of the pot. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go over nice and saturated and you'll notice that I am going over that bottom line of the cobalt blue because we want it to blend okay we don't want it to be too thick lines Again, it doesn't need to be perfect lines. Okay, and I'm gonna take my cobalt blue brush back and I'm not gonna get more paint on the brush. I'm gonna just kind of bring that cobalt blue up into the phthalo blue. Okay, so it gets that nice blended look. I don't want it to go up too high into that darker blue color. We want it to look like a nice natural blend, just like our night sky. Okay. And you can even take a few little brush strokes up into the dark. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in 
with my black. So again, keeping in mind that the sky is going to get darker as it gets higher. Okay, you can kind of see that ombre coming through for the light to the dark. Now I am going to do this top lip as well as the inside. That way when your dirt fills up kind of to here, then you don't have the terracotta color shining through. And there we go. We have our nice dark to light night sky. Um, just give it a, a touch and you know if it's tacky or sticky or you get paint on your hands it probably needs a little bit longer. Okay for this pot I am going to incorporate all of my babies and I'm going to be representing them in a few different ways. So I'm going to start off by using my titanium white um, golden heavy body paint and Milo was a Capricorn and so I am going to be uh, representing him on my pot with the Capricorn constellation. I love this constellation and how and you'll see here when I'm done how it actually looks a little bit like a heart and that helps me think about Milo and all of the love that he has given our lives So now I'm just going to come in here and connect the stars with a really light line so that when you're looking at it, you can kind of see the shape that it makes. And again, the idea is not to get perfection here. This is really just about making time to think about your baby, spend time with your baby. I love stars because they are really imperfect. You don't have to be able to draw perfect five-point stars for this project. Anything is great. Okay, so there's my Capricorn and I'm going to show you here in a minute how I will come back and make that a little more um, Milo specialized. All right, and there's lots of different ways to do stars in your night sky. So you can do something that is like an asterisk. Okay, so just something simple like that. You can do, you know, a five point star. I always think those are kind of the hardest ones to do to get straight, but again, the idea is not to have to have perfect stars. You can also just do some dots. Okay, and make these as if they're falling from the sky. lines okay up like that you can also incorporate a moon into your piece so Matilda and Milo were born on a waning crescent moon which is a really 
thin one so you can incorporate a moon into your pot if you want to there's lots of websites where you can go and type in your baby's birth date and it will tell you what the moon was like during that time so just a little sliver of a moon Okay, so now I am going to do my favorite part of the project, which is the toothbrush stars. So I'm going to get a little bit of the white Craftsmart paint and a little bit of the gold. Okay, and this is going to help us get that look of lots of stars spread across. And you'll see the reason why I like this paint is because it's nice and thin, which is what we need. So we're going to take our toothbrush, get the paint on it, and then we're going to take our thumb and we're just going to give this a nice spray. You can see we get a nice splattering of stars. And the gold is nice. You'll see in the second that the white is going to show up even better. It's okay if some of the toothbrush stars are really tiny and some are bigger, like I have up here at the top, because that's the way the stars are. Okay, and you can have as many or as few as you want. Okay, you can also make some stars with your sharpie paint pens so if you don't want to have to use your brush you can also just come in here and make some darker stars this way um, and that could be a little bit easier especially if you don't have a brush that's small enough and i'm also going to add my baby's names to the pot with the pen So you can kind of see now that they're all here and incorporated into our beautiful night sky pot. So here I have another size pot. This one's a little bit smaller that I painted earlier. And on this one, I am going to be putting a quote from the little prince that I just love that is about stars um, and it says you alone will have stars as no one else has them. We're going to give you a handful of different examples of beautiful star quotes that you can use that are connected to grief and loss and can help you think about your babies. So really you're just going to take your sharpie paint pen and write your quote. And one thing that you want to think about with this is that you don't have to have perfect handwriting. This project is not meant to be a perfect Pinterest project. It's really about the process of getting to do, do the project, think about your baby, have something special in your home, or give a gift to somebody else that helps you think about them. And there you have your little pot with your quote on it. Um, and then you can go back through, which I will do here in a minute, and add some of the stars. So your last step is going to be to personalize the pots even farther by including your name. So on the bottom of my big pot that I did with all of my babies, I'm going to sign 
my name, mommy, on this one. And then on this one, I am going to give this to a friend who just lost a baby. And so I'm just going to sign my name here. And that way, she can always remember how I am thinking of her and her baby every time she looks at her special pot. So once your planter is all dried and you have it the way that you want it, you can start thinking about what kind of plant you want to put inside. One of the things that I wanted to just mention to you because it was something that I really struggled with when it came to plants, especially in the days and weeks and months and even years after my babies first died is I would plant something and I maybe would water it too much or not enough and then it wouldn't do very well and then here comes my grief bubbling back up. When it comes to thinking about what kind of plant you want to put in your pot, you can also think metaphorically and you can certainly choose those plants or those flowers that call to you and that are beautiful, but you can also think about what those plants or flowers might represent. So for example, um, I chose a purple plant for Milo because Purple was always our color for him. You also could think about choosing an aloe plant because aloe has incredible healing powers and that might be a plant that you want to have around to help you in your grieving. For this last planner, I chose the plant Mother of Thousands and I just love this plant. It has all of these little baby plantlets that will spread out and propagate and grow new plants. And I just love thinking about how I am the mother of so many babies, even that aren't here on earth with us, and how their love and joy spreads and propagates and is a beautiful gift to the world.